that was the most boring game I've ever watched in my life. I love baseball. It's it's beautiful. It really is. That sucked. <laughs> I mean, that was just not entertaining whatsoever. And maybe it was because I was flipping from the master seeing Tiger Woods go to to that. Maybe that's why the the entertainment value was just nowhere near the same. But that game just bored the hell out of me. Now it makes it a little bit sweeter because the Phillies win this thing in 14 innings. They win 3-1 to one after Gene Segura golfs. No pun intended, golfs a ball way out of here in the 14th inning to get the boys up two after McCutcheon starts 0 of 6 and ends up in the 7th at bat getting a triple. I mean, maybe it tastes a little bit sweeter because of that. But all around, that, that game was very boring. But listen, we get the W. We win the series, which is huge. It wasn't pretty. The bullpen was tremendous. 14 strikeouts for the bullpen. I mean, from Nishak to Morgan to Hector Neris to David Robertson, Dominguez, Arano, Alvarez, they all did their job. Understand the Miami Marlins don't have the biggest powerhouse lineup ever, but that really was awesome out of the bullpen. I'm not trying to rain on the parade, but David Robertson did allow two hits to the warning track that was this close to going out, and in reality, any other ballpark but Miami, those were bombs. I'm not trying to rain on the parade. Listen, everyone has to play in that ballpark, so everyone has the same chance there, because Odubo almost went yard and extras too, but David Robertson's was before that, so the game went Edit. Whatever. That's a, a useless conversation because it didn't happen. I'm just throwing it out there. We started out the game with a new lineup. I thought Cesar Hernandez would sit, but what ended up happening was we let Franco have a day off and put Scott Kingery in, who Scott Kingery, he's actually been looking great at the plate. He was way overmatched last year. He looked solid today with three more hits added to his statistics today. So awesome for Scotty. So we keep Cesar in and Gabe Kapler used analytics and said he has a great matchup with the Marlins starting pitcher Urania and they, they keep him in. And what happens? Cesar Hernandez hits a bomb in the fourth inning to give us a one to nothing lead. So uh, Listen, the numbers worked. The numbers worked in that case. He wanted to keep Cesar in. He had great numbers against a certain pitcher. And bang, someone who's been struggling like Cesar Hernandez gets going with a legitimate bomb in Miami. As for Vin Velasquez. And that's not even a sarcastic slow clap. That was great out of him. I feel more comfortable with Vin Velasquez than I do Nick Pavetta. And that's saying a lot. So great for Vin Velasquez. He allowed his first hit in the sixth inning. Yeah, his first hit. Now, it happened to be a bomb against Anderson, but he did a great job on the mound. His stat line, six innings, two hits, one earned run. He walked three, four Ks, 81 pitches. He did a tremendous job on the bump. Tremendous. Also, I was talking about the lineup. Real Muto sat and Andrew Knapp came in. You know that's going to happen on a Sunday afternoon game, especially with 17 days without a day off. Holy hell, does he stink. He's garbage. Andrew Knapp is bad. He is so bad. So bad. He ends up uh, not producing much at all offensively, surprisingly. Now, the offense struggled at times. The offense struggled at times. We had opportunities with men on. Well, uh, let's we'll start with the second inning. But this is before really anything got going. We had a chance for Scotty to get knocked in on third base after he doubles and ends up getting to third on an error. But here's the problem: Andrew Knapp's the one trying to knock him in. It just didn't work. It wasn't effective. Sixth inning, Bryce Harper gets thrown out at home. Aggressive. I'm not mad about it. I understand it. I I don't mind the aggression in that spot. Hindsight, yeah, of course. Maybe he could have stayed at third. It was was a nice play. It was a nice relay by the Marlins. I'm not mad at trying to go home there. I love Bryce's aggression. I love the way he runs on the bases. So I'm not mad about it. Ninth inning, bases juiced for real Muto. Bases juiced. And listen, this is coming from a guy who came from Miami. He's on the Phillies. He has a chance in his old ballpark to make some noise, to get the job done, to help solidify it before we go into the bottom of the ninth. Grounds out to shortstop. Gotta get runs through. 
We also in the 13th. I keep running back to Andrew Knapp, and I realize that that's not the best hitter, but we had two men on, one out. Guy on first and second. Andrew Knapp ends up striking out to, to end that 13th inning. So, you know, people want to look at this offense and say, why aren't we producing more runs? Why is it 1-1 one to one in the 14th inning against the Miami Marlins? And that's that's a, that's a not a bad question. We've seen this team now struggle a little bit offensively, and it's baseball. There's going to be highs, there's going to be lows, and that's reality of, of hitting in this sport. It's so hard. I, you, you, you hit three out of ten times, you're in the Hall of Fame. Okay, it's that hard, and you're going to go through slumps, you're going to go through hot streaks, but right now, and I guess it's kind of hard to to justify it, because take a look at the lineup, right, and I know Real Muto is not the best hitter, but taking Franco out of that eighth hole, and I know he's not been insanely hot, but he's been really nice, okay, he's a scary guy in the eighth hole, so you take Franco out, you take Real Muto out, and, and you throw Andrew Knapp in. Now, I can't yell that Scott Kingery can't produce because he's been really successful. He's, what, five hits in the last two games? So Scott Kingery has been a nice piece. Not a threat when it comes to power, but he's been getting on base. But taking out Franco, having Knapp in there, taking out Real Muto, that changes the offense. But you still got Bryce, Reese, McCutcheon, Segura. You're right. You're right. We still do have them. And guess what? They executed late. I said this, but Andrew McCutcheon, 0 was 6. Veteran guy, seventh at bat. What's he do? Triple. Gene Segura. Now he didn't have as bad as a night as Andrew McCutcheon, but these are two acquisitions we got last year. Well, we got this year, and they helped us win the ball game. Gene Segura is first, first of the season. Bomb, bomb. So listen, we win the series. Wasn't pretty, but we got it done. Got it done. The bullpen. Stepped up big time. Gene Segura, McCutcheon, stepped up. Bryce Harper, he finished 1 of 7, but in the first inning, he had a rocket, a legit rocket, right back to Urania, who hit him, and they made a play, and it was a fluky ground out, but he crushed the ball. And there was another hit later in the ball game that he drilled it right into the ship. That was an amazing line drive that just got caught. So he could have been 3 and 7 there. I thought he had some good wood on ball there. Now, tomorrow... Huge series. Mets. Big. Big. And to start us off, Aaron Nola Syndergaard. Come on, fellas. Doesn't get much better than that. I, I am truly, truly excited for that. So all around, I mean, you take a look and we get the win. Vin Velasquez looked good, which is awesome. The bullpen looked good, which was awesome. It wasn't pretty, but we went in 14. It's a lot better than going 14 and losing. The game was a snooze fest. There's no denying that. One of the most boring baseball games I've watched in a long time. It was a really boring baseball game, and there's no denying it. It wasn't like... There's some slow-scoring baseball games that are still, you know, there's still some entertainment to it. The great pitching, the awesome plays. For some reason, for me, and this is someone who loves the sport, I mean, I can't sit here and lie to you. I can't sit here and lie to you. So I want to know, down below, what's your positive? What's the positive you take out of this win? Was it just winning the series? Was it Vin Velasquez? Was it finding a way? Was it winning the game with Andrew Knapp in there, who stinks? Was it Scott Kingery? Scott looked so overmatched last year. To an extreme. 0-2 count every time. And he still gets in those 0-2 counts, but guess what? He finds a way. The kid doesn't look as outmatched as he did last year, and that's awesome. It's a huge step for him. So is that what you take out of it? Is it Gabe Kapler's analytics working? Because he kept Cesar in, and he hit a dinger. We win, and tomorrow's going to be so entertaining. I'm looking forward to it to an extreme. At the same time, we have Sixers playoff, so it's going to be a, you know, a double TV night for Brouts. What's new? That's how it works around here at this time of the year. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Go Phillies. Win the series. Take another one. I would love to get three. I challenged them. I said, let's get three. We got two of three.
That's fine. Let's move on to the next one. See you guys later.